you know, one of the big things, and this I did a video earlier this week, but I, I know a lot of people didn't see it yet. But one of the things that's concerning me is something that my head trader Ben pointed out, which was this pattern here, right? So what we have is this down move from the all-time highs on the S&P 500. And then even though it looks like we're making higher lows, if we look at a chart, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch screens here. I want to show you guys this because this is really earth shattering to me in terms of what it could uh, entail. So this is the psychology of the market, right? And we, we've all probably seen this chart at some point in time. But if you look at the move we had, so here was your run, let's say from COVID up, right? So the big move to the upside, then here was your high in 2021 and the sell-off that followed. And then look at the price action following that. You're generally seeing the same, almost to a T, almost perfectly the same pattern, which denotes the complacency period on this psychology of a market chart. And what we know is that following that in general, we have a bigger down move. So to be honest, you know, looking at this, looking at how the markets have been behaving, I do think that there's a bigger sell-off coming in the in the works here in the not too distant future. Hey, crypto family, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please consider subscribing. We have new crypto videos coming out every single day. If you guys wanna get access to the Bitcoin Bros exclusive content, make sure to check out our Patreon. That will be in the description below. And in today's video, we'll be checking out Gareth Soloway. You can see in the clip that we just watched, he is bearish on Bitcoin in the short term. Gareth is a chief market strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com. He infamously called the Bitcoin top at around 69,000. He's calling for Bitcoin to go down to around 10,000. He was saying that late last year. He doesn't believe the bottom is in yet for BTC. So we'll be checking out and seeing what he has to say about this crypto market. He's talking about what's going to happen this year. So let's go ahead and get his thoughts on the current state of the market. Check it out here. Where, where if this is a bear market end with, and again, you know, I look at past bear markets and, and this one to me could be worse than many of the past ones because you actually have a Fed that has hiked rates percentage wise bigger than really any time in history. I don't remember even in the 80s, you didn't see the percentage wise, like like here we went from 25 basis points to 5%. I mean, think about how many hundreds of percentage points that is, even versus the 1980s where we saw those interest rate increases. So so that to me has to at some point point play out as a shock to the system that finally comes to, to fruition. And, and it is something that I do think we will see not only the October lows of 2022, but even further on. Has the Fed actually ever pulled anything off? <laughs> you know, nope. like, like I don't think so. So, I mean, listen, like a black swan. I mean, what, what do they call it? A white swan when they miraculously pull a rabbit out of a hat? I don't know. But, but to me, that's kind of the situation where it's just like, man, like they just haven't proven themselves to be capable. And mostly because they're always late to the punch, right? Whether it was the transitory and then they had to play catch up by hiking rates so quickly. Now it's in the other camp where, where, are they going to leave rates too high for too long to fight inflation? Um, because that's the kind of the boogeyman. And then does it cause us to kind of go into a spiral? And that's that's my camp, at least. <clears throat> so what Gareth is referring to here is the Federal Reserve not controlling the interest rates effectively. And I would actually have to go against his argument here. He says, when has the Fed ever got anything right? I would say the Fed got things wrong in 2021 when they didn't raise rates fast enough because of all the monetary printing. But since 2010, rates have been at historically low levels and CPI inflation really has only been going up 2% a year. I mean, if you guys believe the CPI inflation numbers and we've had deflation at some points, but the Federal Reserve has pivoted and we also saw the Federal Reserve raise interest rates back in 2018. And when they did that, we did have a little bit of some deflation and they went back and they reversed those changes. So I think over the past 15 years, the Fed actually did a lot of good things. I just think that they failed to recognize the government monetary spending. They don't take that into their calculations. They just look at data. They don't look at how much money is actually being printed, the government spending, which I think that's where they got it wrong in 2021. And I think going forward, it'll be interesting to see if this inflation does come down to 2%. They've raised interest rates all the way up to 5% here. And it has slowed down since they've started to raise interest rates. And you can see that right here. They're continuing to raise interest rates. Are they going to pause? Are they going to continue to raise interest rates? That's yet to be seen. 
but it's going to be very interesting to see how this next year plays out. You know, me personally, I wouldn't bet on runaway inflation. I think it's going to level off, but that's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong. But let's go ahead and see what else Gareth is talking about here. Right. They mm -hmm. certainly haven't unloaded like I think they would have liked to. And a part of that probably is the banking crisis that's now emerging. They have to be a little bit more careful there. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm keeping an eye on, too, is that you have the scenario of a lot of these these companies that are starting to send up warning signals and even the jobs report, right? So we just got the jobs report about a week ago. And and it was a little bit like if you looked at the ADP private sector, that missed and came in a little bit lighter. Even the jobs report itself, the non-farm payroll is a little bit lighter. And even continuing jobless claims were higher than expected. So more people staying on unemployment. Now, right now, the Fed is cheering that because they want that to happen. But the question is, is it just the beginning of that? And is there a long way of job reduction and 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 layoffs coming? Or is it is it just going to be a little bit blip here? Maybe unemployment goes back to 4% and then it stops right there. And and again, it's all about can the Fed engineer, like you said, is it can they engineer this soft landing? This is a cool chart, right? And and so, you know, needless to say, I there's so many bulls out there, which by them by in and of itself is concerning to me. But my level, again, we talked about this, I think it was about two plus weeks ago when we were chatting. 30,500. And, and what's a remarkable here is that you just continue to hammer on this. On Friday, we saw a push above it. But by the end of the day, we closed right at that level. And here we are down ticking again. Granted, it's the weekend. So, you know, light volume, you know, it's it's one of those weird things, right? Bitcoin's open on the weekends, but I don't put a lot of stock in the price action on Bitcoin because it's such light volume over the weekend. But I think that Monday is going to be a pivotal. Monday, Tuesday, very pivotal for Bitcoin because you'll get some more price action going in there with the markets open and, and yields and the dollar moving. The question is, can it break above this level? If it breaks above that level, like I think we talked about a couple of weeks ago, for me, it needs to show me that it can stay above there for a certain amount of days, multiple, multiple days versus just a quick blip above fooling everyone and then coming right back in. But this is a huge level psychologically, right? I mean, this again, we talked about this last time, but you're going back to these levels here, going back to the lows of the bull market, even the pre big run here, and then even this consolidation area over here. And that's that's my biggest issue is the charts right now still show that we're into this area. And then number two is, to me, the bullish sentiment in crypto right now is like is very similar to when I made the call that sixty nine thousand was going to be a fall and we were going to go to twenty thousand. And it's that cycle psycho psychology. We looked at that psychology of the market chart earlier. Those those things are kind of eating at me in terms of whether or not this bear market is fully over. Now, whether or not we've made the lows, obviously, you know, we should know in the next six months or so. But at least in the near term, something likely to me will trigger a sell off back down a little bit. I'm still in the camp personally that it's still mostly, I would say three quarters of it is a risk asset. Um, you know, what What I've noticed over the last three, four years of Bitcoin is that it, it was 95% a risk asset. Well, at one point it was 100%. Then it was 95, then it was 90, then it was 85, 80, and now we're at 75. So like through the banking crisis, there's no doubt about it. That was an awesome situation for Bitcoin. We showed it decouple when the markets were selling off there. So so I think it's slowly maturing. It's kind of like a, an adolescent that needs to get into adulthood here and mature. Um, but I, I still think that in this scenario, if you see a real panic hit the stock market, we see, let's say 20% down. My guess is it does decline um, for the most part. I think like gold, like even like in all fairness, if it's full out panic, everything declines, right? We even saw gold and COVID quickly dip before recovering. But the question then is if it's a longer term bear market in, in stocks, I still think it does get put pressure on it. But again, slowly it's maturing into an, a gold type entity. What's funny about that is the Bitcoin community, they 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 always talk it up like a gold, like a digital gold, right? Like, oh, this is this is the anti-volatility play. But in reality, what they really want is the volatility, right? In a bull market, when you can see Bitcoin go up four or 500%, that's fantastic. That doesn't happen with a gold asset, right? You're not going to see that in gold. And so there's this kind of weird dichotomy there where people want it to be a store of value and, and kind of an offset to kind of the craziness. But at the same time, you usually don't get the crazy positive, insane moves from a, a risk asset that's like gold. So Gareth does not believe Bitcoin is that digital gold as of yet, but thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. Hit that like button if you found any value. My name is Aaron from the Bitcoin Bros. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.